Welcome back to Quantum Mechanical Models on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, here's a problem for you that a lot of people have problems with. Um, and the reason people have problems with is that's because they don't give you the value of k or your magnetic quantum number. Okay, so we're going to calculate energy and the angular momentum, and we're going to do it for this molecule shown over here, which is porphine, this is actually a derivative of a biological molecule called heme, which I have plenty of videos on in my channel. For porphine, its radius is going to be treated as 440 picometers, and in terms of all these conjugated pi electrons, it has 22 total, so 22 circulating electrons, so to speak. But we want to calculate the energy of an electron in the highest occupied molecular orbital, or the HOMO. So calculate the energy of an electron in the HOMO, and then calculate its angular momentum. So, how do we do this? We have to know the energy level of the HOMO, and to do that, we have to know the magnetic quantum number, the K. But it's not given. So how do we determine that? Well, we remember that there's 22 circulating electrons, and we remember this following rule. This could be very important. Remember that other than K equals zero, all the others have a plus and minus, because you obviously can't have a plus or minus zero. It's just zero. So for every one of these k's, for every one of them, you can have two electrons. Okay. Um, if you think back to your gen chem, that kind of makes sense. All right? So zero just has one. That's just one number, so it's two electrons. But plus or minus one, that's plus one and minus one. So that's two electrons plus two electrons, so four. So once you get past a level of zero, they all have a capacity for four electrons. Now let's actually figure where the energy is for the highest occupied molecular orbital, meaning electron number 22. So we have two electrons in k equals zero, that's two. Go to k equals plus or minus one, that goes up to six. Plus or minus two, add four more, that's 10. Plus or minus three, add four more. Plus or minus four, add four more. Plus or minus five, we're gonna add four more. That gets us up to a grand total of 22. So therefore, the highest occupied molecular orbital, which accounts for the, the highest energy electron, so our last electron, has to be a K of five, okay? And in the calculation of energy using the eigenvalue that was derived using the Schrodinger equation, it doesn't matter if we consider the positive or negative because we're gonna be squaring it in this calculation, all right? So what is our energy eigenvalue for particle on a ring? The energy is equal to H bar squared times K, the magnetic number, squared, divided by the quantity 2MR squared. And now we have all the information required to actually calculate the energy. H bar, remember, is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th divided by 2 pi. We just determined our K had to be 5. That's the highest energy or the highest occupied molecular orbital electron, 22. So we use 5 squared. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative because we're squaring it. Divided by 2, divided by the mass of the electron. Mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31st. I'm neglecting units, but this is actually in kilograms in case you're curious. And then we divide by the radius squared. What is our radius? It's 440 picometers. So we need to get this in units of meters. So what we do is we take that 440 and multiply it times 10 to the minus 12th. That would convert 440 picometers to meters. And then we have to square that. And when you do this long, tedious calculation in your calculator, you get that the energy of the highest occupied molecular orbital, that electron, is 7.88 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. All right? That's the energy of the highest energy electron, or electron number 22. Okay? Now, let's do something else. Let's calculate the frequency and wavelength of radiation that can induce a transition between the HOMO and the LUMO. Um, so basically, we just need to use this energy calculation, what we just did, to calculate what wavelength of light, what frequency of light could actually induce this transition. Now remember, we can always use this equation back from general chemistry. The energy is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Right? We can use this. All right? But we're looking for the wavelength of light, so let's solve for wavelength. So wavelength is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the energy. Well, we know what Planck's constant is. It's 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th, technically in units of joule seconds. 
C is the speed of light in a vacuum, 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, if we're being precise. The energy, we just calculated that, so throw that down here, divided by 7.88 times 10 to the minus 19th. And when you calculate all this, you'll find that the, the wavelength of light needed to promote an electron from the HOMO to the LUMO is 2.52 times 10 to the minus 7th meters, which happens to be 252 nanometers. In other words, what this means is if you took porphine and you shone light on it with a wavelength of 252 nanometers, you would get promotion of an electron from the HOMO into the LUMO, theoretically. All right, let's calculate the angular momentum of this electron using the energy we calculated. So the energy is equal to the angular momentum squared divided by the quantity 2m times r squared. So if we solve this for the angular momentum L, we get L is equal to the square root of the quantity 2emr squared. Let's plug our numbers in. So the square root of 2 times the energy